Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about what causes a high reverse T3 level. If you don't know what reverse T3 is, it is an anti-thyroid metabolite, and the higher it goes, the worse you will feel, and the harder it is for your thyroid to function. That's why you should care about it. Okay, so we're going to get into detail, but first, if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist, and I specialize in treating thyroid conditions, balancing hormones, and of course, weight loss. So today, let's get our whiteboard here, and we'll talk about reverse T3. So as I mentioned, oh, and by the way, if you haven't already, make sure that you hit the subscribe and the notification bell and so on, because if you have thyroid conditions or you're struggling with weight loss or whatever, or weight gain or whatever it is, I think you're going to find these uh, videos very benefit beneficial. So let's talk about reverse T3, sometimes re abbreviated RT3. So I just want to briefly introduce you to this, and then we'll talk about what causes a high reverse T3 level. Because some of you out there might be thinking, why do I care about my reverse T3? And you should care a lot, okay? Because many of you are taking a medication called Synthroid or Level Thyroxin. And even if you aren't taking this medication, this process called peripheral thyroid conversion still occurs in your body. Okay, so this should look familiar. But what you have in your body is a hormone called T4, all right? And T4, in order to be activated, must be converted to something called T3, okay? But it doesn't always do that. It also has the option of being converted to reverse T3, which is what we're talking about. And when your body converts T4 into T3, it reduces your reverse T3 level and increases your T3 level. But conversely, okay, and there are many factors which do this, it's also possible for you to increase your reverse T3, which guess what? Decreases your T3. And that is what's going to make you feel crappy. It's what's going to make you feel hypothyroid. It's what's going to make you experience weight gain and hair loss and constipation and fatigue and so on. Okay. So you want your reverse, your T3 levels, right? The good hormone, you want your T4 levels to be normal to high and you want your T3 levels to be normal to high and you do not want your reverse T3 levels to be high. So the things that we're talking about here increase reverse T3 and are therefore bad. Okay, you do not want these to happen in your body, which is why we're talking about that. So you have a ch the opportunity and chance, if you can manage these conditions, to naturally improve thyroid function. And just so you know, today we're just talking about what causes a high reverse T3. We're not going to be talking about the treatment. I will have a video which goes over that separately. They're two separate things, um, and they require their own time and sort of attention. Okay, so let's get to the topic, which is high levels of reverse T3. So the first one is dieting and calorie restriction. Okay, I'm not talking about dieting here like eating the paleo diet or whatever, right? I'm talking about reducing the amount of calories that you consume on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, what this does is it triggers something called metabolic adaptation. You don't really need to know what that means, but there have been many studies that prove that this occurs. And what happens is, as you reduce your calories, guess what happens to your metabolism? it drops as well. Okay. This is why so many people can never, or what happens is people will lose weight. Then they'll, by reducing their calories, they'll increase their calories. They'll gain it all back. It's because the metabolism drops and stays low. Now, what you need to know is that as your metabolism drops, one of the reasons for that is your body compensates by guess what? Increasing reverse T3 level. And it does this by also decreasing T3 because it senses, Hey, we don't have enough food. We need to slow down our metabolism. And remember, the thyroid controls your metabolism, and so it's therefore, uh, well, it's not the only thing, but it's one of the primary drivers of your, your metabolism. So anything which drives down metabolism is going to drive down thyroid function as well. So I know a lot of you struggle with this because, you know, many hi hypothyroid patients and patients with Hashimoto's and patients who don't have a thyroid, by the way, just so that we're all clear, this applies to if you have Hashimoto's, no thyroid, post-thyroidectomy, if you're post-radioactive iodine ablation, whatever, any sort of thyroid problem, this still matters. Okay. I get questions like that all the time. So I want you to be aware of that, but back on track here, we, I know, and you probably know this, if you're watching this, many of you suffer from weight gain and the inability to lose weight. So what does that drive you to do? Calorie restriction, which guess what makes your thyroid function worse. Now I have ways that are better at helping you lose weight. Um, I'll have a link to some of that information below, but just know this is not the way that you want to do it because it's going to make your thyroid worse over time. I can promise you that it will only lead to weight gain long-term through this mechanism of increasing reverse T3. So that's number one. Number two is inflammation. Okay. Anything that causes inflammation. And here I'm really talking about both cellular inflammation and systemic inflammation. So many of you know, inflammation is bad, right? And I don't really need to convince you that inflammation in your body is a bad thing, but a lot of you struggle to understand, you know, where it's coming from and what causes inflammation and if you have it in your body or not. And so really any type of inflammation, either cellular, you know, small amounts of inflammation at your, the level of your cells or widespread inflammation, you know, just systemic, that's what systemic means throughout your entire body. These all impact this ability of your, your body to convert T4 into T3. 
So high inflammation leads to high RT3 or high reverse T3. Now, if you have inflammation, you can actually check it systemically for, with certain blood tests called the ESR or CRP. Um, and I would recommend that you order those, but there are lots of other things which cause inflammation. So just eating bad quality food can cause inflammation or eating foods which you are, your body is, um, I don't want to say allergic to, but just intolerant to can increase, you know, inflammatory levels in your body, not sleeping enough, not exercising, all of these things increase inflammation. So address it if it's, if it's widespread and systemic, but do those things which drop inflammation and that will help drop reverse T3. And in fact, exercising, by the way, will reduce inflammation and also increase T3 levels. But again, we'll talk about treatment later. Number three is nutrient deficiencies. Not just any nutrient deficiencies though, certain and specific nutrients. So the ones I'm going to list here are zinc, selenium, and then vitamin E and A. So don't worry if you, if you can't read that, just listen to what I'm saying here. So zinc, selenium, vitamin E, and vitamin A. Now zinc and selenium are incredibly important for thyroid function. Um, both of these things reduce inflammation inside of your thyroid gland. Selenium helps produce um, this, this uh, master antioxidant called glutathione. Zinc helps improve teeth to, for the teeth reconversion through its effects on inflammation and so on. So a lot of people though, and in fact, the studies that I've looked at peg it around 50% in the elderly, which is, you know, may not translate to 50% in all populations, but 50% of elderly people are zinc deficient. And this is because we don't, you know, generally consume a healthy diet and so on. And our, the soil is depleted of nutrients and so on. Another topic for another day. But the idea is that a lot of you have these nutrient deficiencies. And even though your body wants to take T4 and turn it into T3, it just can't, right? It doesn't have the right um, cofactors and enzymes to allow this process to take place. So it does occur, but it's just sluggish, right? It's just, it's kind of like walking through the mud. Like you can get places, you're just not going very fast. So if you replace these levels with, and by the way, this is a good opportunity because you can take these things and you can replete those levels and it will improve this process. I have supplements which contain these ingredients designed to help the T4 to T3 conversion process. I'll leave a link to those in, um, below, but I just want you to be aware that certain and specific nutrient deficiencies can impact negatively your body's ability to convert T4 to the good thing T3. And if you have those deficiencies, your body will take that T4 and turn it into RT3 or reverse T3, which we don't want. Number four is anything that causes intestinal dysfunction. Okay, so here's a number that I want you to remember, and that is 20%. And what that number reflects is the amount of T4 that is converted, you know, in your entire body. So 20% of all the conversion that's occurring from T4 to T3 occurs in the gut. Okay. So in your intestinal tract, your, and your intestinal tract is the site of a lot of different uh, production of hormones, especially serotonin and immune function and so on. So it's an important place, right? And so if you have any problem with your gut or your intestinal tract, which we'll talk about in just a second, it will limit this total 20% and therefore you might get high levels of reverse T3. So what do you want to do? Well, you want to identify if you have any gut problems. Okay. Do you have low stomach acid? Do you have intestinal um, bacterial overgrowth or, or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth? Otherwise known as SIBO. Do you have fungal overgrowth? Do you have irritable bowel syndrome? Do you have gas or bloating or constipation? Any of those things, those are not normal. They indicate a, there is a problem inside your gut that must be addressed. So remember, intestinal dysfunction will limit this. Now, I want you to kind of think here. So as we're talking about these, so diet, calorie restriction, inflammation, nutrient deficiencies, intestinal dysfunction. Okay, so it's very likely that some of you listening to this may have one, two, three, four, maybe five of these things. So you can see that by themselves, they may not account for a lot, but when you start stacking them on top of each other, now you're really starting to feel the effects of this T4 to T3 conversion. Okay, so that's number four. Number five, of course, is stress. Any sort of stress, by the way, I'm not talking about you know, intense sort of stress, like a death of a family member or some, you know, divorce or things like that. I'm talking about just everyday stress. All these things add up and they can limit the T4 to T3 conversion. They can also increase cortisol, which I kind of, I don't want to say cortisol is a poison to your thyroid, but the higher, the, the prob more problems you have with cortisol, the more problems you're going to have with your thyroid. They, they are, they're linked in that way. Okay. So you really don't want to mess around with stress. And you really don't want to mess around with cortisol if you can help it. Again, that one's something that you might not be able to manage just because of what's going on in your life, but if you can definitely eliminate stress. And then another one, which you do have control over is the amount of sleep that you're getting. So we know that the, if you, if you have a lack of sleep or a decrease in the hours that you sleep at night, guess what's going to happen to your T4 to T3 conversion? It's going to drop. Okay. So you're going to have high levels of reverse T3 in this setting. And you might think, oh, well that sucks. And yes, it does, but it's also good because that's something that a lot of you can control. Now, some of these things, you know, like you may not, you may have calorie restricted in your life four or five times already. You're like, oh man, you're good. You know, that's going to cause a problem for you and you can treat it. It's just going to take a while. But a lot of you can, you know, starting 
tomorrow can imp can change how you address your sleep. So you can do things which improve the quality of your sleep and you know you can change the temperature in the room that you're sleeping in, you wear blue blocking glasses or blue light blocking glasses and so on. So this is something that you can address. And so again, what we have here are at least, what did I do, six? And by the way, there's many more than this. I just don't wanna have a super long video here, but there's at least six causes that I see that are pretty common among thyroid patients, which cause a high reverse T3, which again matters because it drops thyroid function because of the way that your body converts T4 to T3. So what I want you to do is leave in the comments below if any of these apply to you. So just say, yeah, you know, I, I think I have nutrient deficiencies or I took zinc and it did help or whatever. Or yes, I think I have inflammation. I just don't know where it's coming from. Leave your comment below if you fall into one of these categories um, and I'll do my best to respond. Also, if you haven't already, don't forget to go down to the link below in the description and a pinned comment. I'll have a link to um, my free thyroid resources. So if you have any sort of thyroid conditions, I have a ton of resources that you can download for free, all designed to help you. Um, and I think you'll like that. Things like which foods to eat, which to avoid, optimal thyroid lab tests, and so on. So that's all I have for you today. And otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one.